welcome to my fridge. I definitely do not have an Alicia Silverstone refrigerator. I would say we're about 90% plant-based. I get asked quite often just fitness or um, exercise questions and I always revert back to diet is 80% of this. So let me share with you what is in my refrigerator. But first we're gonna be spending some time at Meme's. Meme and Pepe's. We're gonna go hang out with um, my sister and my niece and just spend the day kind of chilling out by the pool, um, playing by the playground. I used to not like chia seed water, but I follow this girl on uh, YouTube, her channel Sarah Sarah's Day, I think. She was talking about um, her chia seed water the other day and how she likes it because she gets to chew on the chia seeds. And I don't know why that like never crossed my mind. I would always like try to just chug it down and it grossed me out so bad because I was like swallowing like little chunks. But now when I drink it, I just kind of chew the pieces up and it's so much better. It's just like, it's so weird how like a mindset can change. So yeah, this is the big one. <laughs> okay, we gotta put them back before we go. Where's your sisters? Oh. We're getting ready to go to Mammoth. <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna be able to swim today though. It's kind of chilly. Yeah. You think it's too chilly to swim today? Mm, maybe. Maybe. super cool greenhouse that my dad actually built um, with repurposed, or I guess you would call it repurposed wood, but wood from an old barn, um, and then glass from a shop that closed down. And he actually made all of this. Super cool, right? It's really Jocelyn's greenhouse. You gonna give me the tour? Tons of pineapple. It's got thorns on it. Stra uh, tomato? Yep. Those are tomatoes. I got mint in here. Thai basil. More pineapple. More pineapple. That I just threw in there. Also have aloe in this. Oh, that Thai basil is so strong. These tomatoes are strong too, actually. See how it, like, oh, just it touched just touched it and it fell. Those all fall in here and grow like crazy. The little micro farm.
You having a snack? It's not hard to do. You just got, and that way you know you'll never, you'll never. You just got, you just start swimming underwater, like towards the surface. That's how you do it, okay? Just you watch how I'm going to do it. She just belly flopped. <laughs> she did go under though. I did it. All right, go ahead. You went. <laughs> you went. Circle, yeah. You went you Do it again. We'll, I'll keep recording. Yes, I can. I'm vegan. I can do anything. <laughs> no, you're not vegan. You're you're vegan. I'm, you're mostly I'm vegan. Eighty percent, eighty-five, ninety percent, ninety percent. Do you eat them? It's almost got like a. Is it sweet? Pepper. Just some lettuce. Oh, oh the, the aftertaste is like radish. Hi guys, comment down below what do you think we're doing today. <laughs> Welcome to my fridge. Let's do a little tour. So, I would consider my diet to be mostly plant-based i try to completely avoid um, any kind of dairy as well as meat and anything processed so my diet is very high in fresh fruits and vegetables that's what i try to put all my focus in when i am making a meal that's the center of my meal is my fruits or vegetables and yeah the other stuff the carbs i try to make sure i have complex carbs like um, potatoes sweet potatoes um, if I'm eating pasta I like lentil pasta or whole wheat pastas um, I try to avoid anything like overly processed I do incorporate eggs here and there very rarely though let's see what's in the fridge I feel like having a good base of condiments is like essential to enjoying all your other foods if you know me or know anything about me hot sauce is life so I have many different varieties of hot sauce that I keep in the fridge this one is a um, black label so very smoky the classic Tabasco sriracha if you don't have sriracha in your life I don't even know if you're living Dijon mustard is also a big staple for me and then I have this jalapeno Tabasco the good old-fashioned classic Texas Pete and then some Cholula and then some like probiotic. It's like some fermented, um, it's kind of like green sriracha. BBQ, this is not the best brand. I just have that in here. I think I have a better one. Yeah, this one's better. This one's cleaner, but there's still a lot of sugar and stuff like this. So you kind of want to go easy on that. Up top, I just have some olives and some jelly, some more olives, some more jelly. Um, some relish, some more, uh, or some peppers. And then something that I do um, is I just have taken like an old cheese bottle. It's cashew cheese. So I grind up cashews with garlic powder, nutritional yeast, and salt. And then I just put it back in this. And um, yeah, it looks kind of just like Parmesan cheese a little bit. This... I have been adding on a lot of stuff lately. It's like this wasabi horseradish, and it's really good. I've been adding this like um, just a little bit with like my stir fries or anything like that, and it just adds a little spice, heat, and a little bit of tang. Let's put that with the hot sauces. Uh, some ketchup, 
Um, this has a lot of sugar in it. It's not that great, but it's kind of like a sweet treat to add to our Asian inspired dinners. This is hoisin sauce. We use this as a dipping sauce mixed with peanut butter for our summer rolls. And then Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. I don't even use that. I, I don't even know why I have that. Liquid smoke. If you are going plant-based or removing meat from your diet and you are used to cooking with a lot of like smoked meats, this is... Okay. Um, this is a, another Asian type seasoning. It's a garlic chili oil. And then this is another Asian type seasoning. Um, tamarind. I don't really use that that much either. And salsa and A1. Literally, I probably should just throw this away. Yep, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, because I have not used this in like forever. I don't even know why that's still in there, to be honest. Uh, the next part we'll look at is the top of my fridge. And so we have eggs. Like I said, I do incorporate some eggs into my diet. Very, It's more of like if like it's a Saturday and we don't have the kids and I just want to have like a fancy breakfast with me and Frankie, I'll make some omelets or something. It is not something that I consider like super nutritious. Um, I think the bad outweighs the good, but I also like don't want to feel like a certain level of like deprivation. So if I want to have it, I'm going to have it. And I do incorporate eggs into my kids diet a little bit more. I would say like maybe once a week, I'll do scrambled eggs for them for breakfast. And I do this because I actually like, I have this weird fear of them becoming allergic to eggs if they are never introduced to them. So I do let them have a little bit of eggs. Also on this next, also on this next, um, or on this shelf I have, I usually will stack a bunch of leftovers up here. So right now I just have some leftover cheese sauce. When I make my vegan cheese sauce, which is the potato and carrot based one, I'll link the recipe in the description for that. But when I make that, I make big batches of it because I can put it on anything. Like we had it last night for dinner um, and I'm going, I'm going to a brunch tomorrow and I'm going to make these like breakfast enchiladas and I'm gonna put that on top of it. We'll use it as like a dip for like chips or um, cut up some like carrots and dip it in it. So honestly, when you make it, it's worth just making a big batch. Also with that, I have some sweet potatoes underneath. Those are great to always have on hand as well. And then I have I always will keep baby spinach. Baby spinach is great to throw in smoothies or in a salad. It's really super nutritionally dense. Um, or I'll just take it and like wilt it down and put it over like grits and make it like loaded grits for breakfast. So spinach is a must. <sighs> my arm is tired. Moving on to my second shelf, I have loads and heaps of mushrooms. So I have this, con I have three containers this size. These are the um, eight ounce containers. So I have, I keep a lot of mushrooms because that's kind of like a meat substitute, substitute for us. So I'll just like dice it up and throw it in like lentils and get it nice and brown or in sauces for that like depth of like umami flavor um, or just to have them. I Something that I like always do when, you know that when you like really just want like a quick snack, most of the time you go for something bad. Something that I love to do, I'm about to just do it to show you because you might not even believe me. It's kind, of, it's kind of weird. Anyway, I just pop the center out of the mushroom and then I come in here with my sriracha and I just kind of, you know, pop that all in there. I like savory, so this is a quick like grab and go snack for me, so yeah. That's so good to me, I don't know. Some people don't like raw mushrooms. I'm not that person. I'm the person that likes raw mushrooms with sriracha. Also on shelf number two, there's really no like order to any of this. I don't have meat in my fridge, so I don't really have to worry about like where everything is placed because I can't like cross contaminate anything with like raw blood from chicken because there is none. So anyway, um, so it's just kind of like where everything fits to be honest. So there's no bell peppers. I always have these. These are super high in vitamin C. These are great. I like the colored ones um, for snacking on because they're a lot sweeter. But the green ones are great for like adding like stir fries or in spaghetti sauces or zucchini. That's a staple as well. 
Um, you can make uh, noodles out of it or just like have it. I think it's pretty neutral flavored and the texture usually isn't too like iffy for the kids. So usually they like um, zucchini too. So that's a win. Sugar snaps. These are a godsend to those who have super picky children who do not want to eat things that are green. They love these. They're kind of fun because opening them up and you get the pee inside and all that. So these are awesome. And then cauliflower. Cauliflower is also another multi-functioning vegetable. You can make cauliflower rice. You can roast it. You can steam it. Um, it's pretty neutral in flavor, so it you can really kind of create it into anything. I've made buffalo cauliflower, or we've done like a teriyaki cauliflower, or I just do like um, this dish called mugu gai pan, where it's like a lot of garlic and um, celery and cauliflower, and it's kind of like a stir fry. So cauliflower is very, very versatile. So next thing, I'm moving on to the next shelf now. The next shelf right now I have a container of mixed greens. Um, I usually try to keep a container of this. These ones have baby green kale, baby spinach, and baby chard. I like this because it like just makes my salads look like fancier. Um, they don't look so boring. I have tried like sauteing that up, but I don't know. I think it's the chard that I didn't really like the taste sauteed. So this next shelf has kind of become like another condiment shelf because I'm obsessed with condiments. So at pretty much at all times, I will always keep, this is my cashew cream sauce. This can literally be sour cream. It can be a cheese sauce for pasta. It can be, um, I mean, anything. You can literally put this on anything. It's so delicious. So I always try to keep this in the fridge. And then we always have multiple types of salsa. My kids really like the sweeter salsas, which I'm not about, but this is one from Aldi's that they like. It's a garlic blend. And then I have homemade salsa. We usually always have this in the fridge as well. And then I just, I save, when I make pickled onions, I save the juice. And so then the next time I'm slicing an onion, I'll just slice it up and then throw it in here too. Cause pickled onions are really great on a lot of things too. It makes them like a little bit sweeter and it takes away some of that um, like kind of like sulfur flavor. So anyway, the next thing I have is like some homemade Italian dressing. You would not believe what all is in a regular like store-bought Italian dressing. Like there's tons of sugar, it's crappy oils. So just make your own, get a good oil. I used avocado, half avocado, half olive oil in that one. And then um, just like Italian herbs and then like onion powder, garlic powder, salt, and whatever kind of vinegar you want to use. I think I used red wine for that one, but anyway. This is amazing. This is an Aldi's find. I showed this on my last Aldi's haul. It is a brownie batter dessert hummus. It is made from chickpeas and cocoa powder and um, coconut oil. It is so delicious, so that's a great little sweet treat. And then I love having berries in the fridge. I would love to like, always have blackberries and raspberries and blueberries and strawberries but realistically where we're at it's really hard to always find that stuff the blueberries were on sale and were pre looked pretty great so i got these this time but the raspberries and blackberries are usually so expensive that i don't get them all the time i usually just get them when they're on sale but those are literally the best fruit are berries like raspberries and blackberries because that bitterness is actually really good for you and they're the lowest in sugar. So if you can afford to keep raspberries and blackberries in your fridge at all time, do it because they're amazing for you. Plus they're packed with vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, fiber, all, all of them. I have some maple syrup. I have some jalapeno slices. These kind of serve multi-purpose too. If I'm making a salad dressing, I'll even use some of the juice for that sometimes. I have some pickles. I have some radishes just because they kind of like fit right here. And then I don't I don't normally buy like the prepared vegetable stock just because I don't use it that often and it takes up a lot of space. So I just keep this, this brand is called Better Than Bouillon and it's a seasoned vegetable base. So pretty much it's just roasted vegetables that then are boiled in water and then they take that and turn it into a stock. So you just take this and add this to water and it makes your own stock. So have that. I like putting my watermelon in these like pretty jars because it utilizes vertical space in the fridge and gives you more space. 
but it also just, I mean, it's aesthetics. It looks nice. I mean, I think it looks nice, but anyway. This is a homemade ginger ale that my dad made. I always keep fresh cilantro in the fridge. And a trick to cilantro is if you just put it in a jar and put a tiny bit of water on the bottom and then tint it like this, it'll literally stay fresh in the fridge like this for like a week, two weeks. And this is really for any herbs. And I've seen people do this with asparagus too. I haven't actually tried it with asparagus, but I'm sure it works in the same way. Almond milk and my almond creamer. I always keep a bottle of white wine in the fridge <laughs> because of my blush. <laughs> no, because I'm gonna cook. I mean, sometimes I even blush, but I keep white wine because this is, I like deglazing the, my pans with this. It adds like a really cool depth of flavor that you just can't get, especially to like a lot of Italian dishes. And I actually have been doing it a lot in like my curries and my Indian dishes. And it's crazy how good it is with just a little bit of wine. Something that Aldi's doesn't carry all the time, but they have occasionally is this pineapple juice. And it's literally just pineapple juice. Like the ingredients say pineapple juice, not from concentrate or anything like that. Any smoothie that has pineapple in it or pineapple juice like that, those are the ones you can like pack with like kale and like um, broccoli sprouts. You can put like all that kind of stuff in it because the um, pineapple is so strong flavored and so sweet that nobody will even notice. So in my first drawer here, I have just some more bell peppers, tons of apples. I mean, I do buy organic apples because I don't like to peel them. And I just feel like I don't like the wax and stuff that's on the other apples either. So I'm very picky about making sure I buy organic apples. And then I get these little English cucumbers. I like these because it's like more for one serving versus like cutting up a whole cucumber and then putting the rest in the fridge. So, And then some asparagus, green onion. And then down here, I have just some romaine lettuce, carrots, some celery, and some broccoli. So that is everything that I keep in my fridge, but I do keep a lot of my stuff out as well. This is what I, I normally always have what's here. Or if it's not here, it means I need to go grocery shopping. So I always will have some of my garlic. I try to keep lemons and limes. And then I have cuties, grapefruit, bananas. I do have some more apples out here because sometimes like in the mornings my teeth are so sensitive I don't like having them cold. Pineapple, cantaloupe. This is something that I don't always have if, if it's not in season but it is in season right now. So and my tomatoes. I never put my tomatoes in the fridge because I feel like they just get really kind of like mushy. So I leave these out as well and avocados. So a trick that my sister-in-law taught me about avocados is you leave them out until they get ripe and when they feel like perfect you just pop them in the fridge and they will literally last for like a week a week and a half in the Wait, mama, is there any white avocados? um no baby not yet that was like a huge life hack what i do when i go grocery shopping is i buy tons of fresh fruits and vegetables obviously but i get a bunch of frozen as well so at the very beginning of the week we'll go through all of the fresh stuff and like towards the end of the week or on like a really busy night so i don't have to do the prepping of cutting it up and all that i'll just grab a bag of something frozen so keeping lots of frozen vegetables and fruit is a great way to just make sure that you always have something i call it my fast food either my canned vegetables or my frozen fruits and vegetables that's my fast food my plant-based fast food so let me show you what we have as you guys know i'm obsessed with aldi's so they have these like little spinach and kale they're these little potato bites they also have these vegan black bean burgers and they have these meat for or chickenless chicken patties these are my like quick go-to just grab something to cook it up i also like to keep a lot of my different like i guess you would call them like supplements i don't know what, how, what you call them but anyway i keep my matcha powder in here to keep it fresh longer i keep my hemp seeds in here i have some moringa powder as well and then my flax meal um, or ground flax seeds i keep those in here i make batches of pancakes which i'm sure you've seen if you've watched any of my other videos so I make batches of pancakes and then I just freeze them. And then these are just all my mixed vegetables. So I have frozen asparagus, I have frozen peas, green beans, we've got corn, we've got spinach, some edamame, broccoli in here too. So this is just a quick grab, throw it in a pan with a little bit of water, steam it up, season it, and go. I also keep my bread and my bulk coffee in the freezer. And then I do have a few sweet treats for the kids. These are like a fruit these fruit popsicle things and then i keep nuts in the freezer just to make sure that they stay fresh longer and then this whole bottom drawer is just nothing but frozen fruits and these are for smoothies also if you have not 
tried this brand of blueberries, you're missing out. You need to switch all your blueberries to this. So yeah, that is the freezer. Anyway, yeah, so that is everything that was in my fridge. And obviously it'll change sometimes if Aldi's comes out with something new and inventive. But for the most part, our diet just consists of focusing mainly on having fresh fruits and vegetables um, as much as possible, implementing in frozen or canned when necessary. And also, if we are wanting to cheat, we will have eggs or very occasionally we will have dairy. But for the most part, we just try to eat a very plant-based diet and we've just noticed the most health benefits eating that way. Um, I've noticed the most physical benefits um, for myself. I like just recover faster from workouts um, and I've been able to stay the leanest eating this way without having to count calories or do like portions or count my macros or do anything like that. Like I just eat and I eat thinking about like how much nutrition something has. And I know people, you always hear people say like, oh, eat the rainbow, but it is very essential to eat all the different colors and from the different um, food groups because that's where you get the most vitamins and minerals from everything that you're eating. So let's make some lentils for These lentils have quickly become a essential for us. I love having them really accessible and easy to grab for quick meals or even just for a snack so the taco flavor seasoning has also been my go-to here lately and to make these lentils i found that the easiest way is to just go ahead and season the actual broth that they cook in i used to pre-boil them and then saute them in a pan with all the spices but i found that I, it was really easy to over um, cook them and they would turn to mush that way so what I actually have been doing lately is I just cover the lentils in about an inch extra of water. I can't give you an exact measurement here, but if you see that they're getting dry too fast, you might have to add water as you go. But just as a general rule of thumb, I say about an inch is fine. At this point, you just let them continue to simmer until all the liquids have been absorbed. Then just remove them from the heat and let them sit until you're ready to use them. Quick tip here, if you need to make like a cashew cream sauce or anything and you have not soaked your cashews, you can actually just go ahead and boil them for about maybe 10-15 minutes and then I'm going to toss those in the blender and I'm going to make a cashew cream sauce to go with our, um, these are taco lentils. And then to go with the taco lentils, I am making some roasted sweet potatoes. So for dinner, it'll be the roasted sweet potatoes at the base with some lentil, the taco seasoned lentils on top. Um, and then I'm gonna cut up some cilantro, some onions, some radish, and then we'll put um, maybe a squeeze of lime and then the cashew cream sauce and it'll be delicious. Thank you so much for watching and if you are interested in this cashew cream sauce just comment below and I'll be sure to message you the recipe. Also be sure to subscribe and click the bell that way you'll be notified the next time I post a video. Happy cooking! Could be a dream. Sugar. Then I think I'm glad to come you.